Kuwait Foresight, a sports writer for the Post Journal, put it into perspective. As euphoria was sweeping the city, war clouds were blacker than ever, and every baseball fan in the land was filled with doubt concerning the fate of the national game come another season. As the season ended, so did the careers of some of the Falcon greats of the early 40s. Many of Jamestown fans' baseball idols were to see service in the United States Army and Navy, including its owner, Harry Bisgar, who was called to the Army in late fall of 1942. Mr. Bisgar had a sincere desire to keep the team in Jamestown, so he arranged to have the Jamestown franchise declared inactive, then worked out an agreement with the St. Louis Cardinals to operate their franchise in Jamestown. As would have it, the Hamilton Club was closed down indefinitely due to the war. So Sam Breeden of the Cardinals agreed to the arrangement and in 1943 was to see the St. Louis Cardinals franchise here. Elmer Weinschreiter, after the season, went back to Cleveland and worked at a turret lathe in a Cleveland war production plant. He was quoted as saying, I want to make it hot for the Axis. These were uncertain times in the minor leagues, especially in Jamestown, as the likes of Johnny Pollock went into the U.S. Army, Dwayne Schaefer worked in local factory and war production, Swat Erickson was in the Army, and so on and so forth. Even Jamestown's premier ball player, Johnny Newman, who led the league for the second year in a row in batting, was drafted by the Chicago Draft Board. Johnny Newman said, Baseball has been good to me. I have had the breaks in baseball. I have received much more than a living from the game. I'm ready and anxious to serve my Uncle Sam wherever I am needed most. What's the password? Texas. Keep in cover, they may be German. Any line on these woods, Major? I didn't hear the countersign. Oh, Liga. Texas Liga. Will this road take us to third bat headquarters? Straight ahead. Get going. Just a minute. What is a Texas Liga, Major? How's that? I said, what's a Texas Liga? It's some kind of baseball term. What kind? A safe hit just over the head of the infield. Nobody asked you. How'd the Dodgers make out this year? Hey, who's your commanding officer, soldier? Whoever he is, he knows how the Dodgers made out. Let's see your dog tags. What? Come on, we're not taking any chances. Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Hey, what is this? Was ist dein Name? What kind of nonsense? Schnell, schnell, Name. Sprechen Sie. Drop those rifles. You. Who's the dragon lady? She's in Terry and the Pirates. What's a hot rod? The hopped up jalopy. Hello, Joe, what do you know? Just got back from a vaudeville show. <laughs> I guess they're okay. Thank you, Sergeant. A PFC major, praying for civilian. That's why I believe in being careful. And may I suggest, sir, that you study up on baseball? Yeah, I guess I'd better. <laughs> 43 scorecard saluted those former Jamestown Falcon ball players who were in the armed forces. And it was many. It now started to hit home. The 1943 team, managed by Jack Sanford, managed to make the playoffs. However, the effect of the war was seen not only personally, but on the st in the stands as well. They drew 67,738 patrons. June of 1943, Bob Vetter went into Batavia, slated to pitch. He'd had only modest success to date. When the team came in to Batavia, they did not have a catcher. Their starting catcher had received an injury. So the word was passed around in old, that to a, the 17-year-old vetter that the stadium electrician, an Olean resident, had been a decent catcher a few years back. There were a few options, since there was no catcher. Vetter took the signs from this handyman catcher who put on a Falcons uniform and when he looked up to the scoreboard at the end of the game, there were 12 zeros next to the name Batavia, signifying that Bob Vetter had thrown the first Jamestown no-hitter in Pony League history. Vetter later recalled, I took every sign he offered without shaking him off once. 
Fetter went on to have a record of seven and four before he enlisted in the Army. Following stateside training, Bob Vetter, a Buffalo native, left for England on May 12, 1944. Another crowd favorite was Ernie Solid Folks Rovatic. Ernie was one of the star hitters on the team that year. And in fact, he was only one of a fortunate three to begin and end the season in the Falcons, as there was so much change in personnel due to the draft. Ernie led the league in hitting for much of the season until a slump near the end of the summer dropped him into second in the league. When the season ended, the St. Louis Cardinal scouts and upper management called Ernie Robatic one of the greatest prospects they had ever seen and scheduled him to report to their Pacific Coast League club. A short step to the majors. Ernie came back to Jamestown one month before being sent overseas in June of 1944. While in town he signed this autograph and was quoted as saying in the newspaper, if I come out of this thing all right and if I go on to make the majors I'm going to make Jamestown my home when I am done with baseball. I like this town. And I like the spirit of the people, not only the baseball fans, but others whom I have met here. Harry Bisgeyer was preparing during the off-season of 1944 and 1945 towards the new year. Memories flash back to one of baseball's favorites in 1943, Ernie Rovatic, when word came in the February 14, 1945 Post Journal. Private Ernie Solid Folks Rovatic, idol of the Jamestown Pony League baseball fans two seasons ago, gave his life to his country on a battlefield in Germany January 14th. He was the first player to wear a Falcons uniform to be killed in action. When called to the service, Rovatic was considered a top prospect and was due to report to the Pacific Coast League Sacramento Club. The news came from Rovatic's mother calling to inform the town that her son had been so taken and would not be returning. Another blue star was put up in a window and the first loss of a Jamestown Falcon. It would prove to be the only loss of a Jamestown Falcon in the war. Frank Hyde reported a new pitcher had arrived on the scene. His name, Bob Vetter. Following several months of recovery, both in Europe and in the States, after being shelled in Omaha Beach during D-Day invasion, and having had two operations performed on his head, Bob Vetter was honorably discharged. He took home a sustainer plate in his skull and a semi-paralyzed left arm and hand, but he was not content simply to survive. He notified the Cardinals who still reserved his baseball rights, that he was ready to come back to baseball. The Cardinal Brass was amazed by his progress in the spring and assigned him to their Carolina League Club. From there, he wired Harry Bisgeyer, who bought out Vetter's contract and asked him to report immediately. Bob Vetter later told Frank Hyde when he arrived in Jamestown that Mr. Bisgeyer had a lot of faith in me. He taught me to have faith in myself. It's a long way and I've got a lot to learn but now I am sure I'll make it. Bob Vetter ended up the 1945 season with a highly respectable 10 and 9 record. Which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. In the reply, there is no qualification. <laughs> 